All right, let's get started. Good morning, and a warm welcome to everyone joining us today. I'm Wilson Miao, Member of Parliament uh, from Richmond Center. I'll be your MC for today's event, and it is my greatest pleasure to be here in North Vancouver for this important announcement. To start, I would like to acknowledge that we are gathered on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples, including the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. We thank them for sharing their land and their stewardship of these land. As a resident for Richmond, BC, I find great joy in appreciating the wonders of our beautiful British Columbia. Yet beneath this pleasant service lies a rea reality we must confront, the constant threat of earthquakes. With seismic activities a constant concern, it is imperative that we come together to understand, prepare, and respond effectively. With seismic activity a constant, actually, Today, we gather to address the pressing issue of earthquake in our region and embark on a journey to bolster our resilience and safeguard our communities against seismic activities. So without further ado, let's get into the matter at hand. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Jonathan Wilkinson, Canada Minister of Energy and Natural Resources, to deliver his remark. All right, uh, thank you, Wilson. Bonjour tout le monde. Hello, everyone, and thank you for, uh, for joining us here today. I also just want to begin by acknowledging that uh, this event is taking place on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Squamish, the Musqueam, and the tsleil First Nations. And certainly, I'm very pleased to be joined by a number of my colleagues, uh, including the Honorable Harjit Sejan, and of course, uh, the Minister of Emergency Preparedness for, uh, for British Columbia, Bowen Ma. In an age where we are increasingly confronted globally with natural disasters, Canadians need their governments to respond in a serious way. Think about floods and wildfires, which are increasing in frequency and severity with climate change, and of course, earthquakes. Every year in Canada, nearly 5,000 earthquakes are recorded. Chaque année au Canada, il y a près de 5000 tremblements de terre. Le gouvernement fédéral prend la menace des tremblements de terre très au sérieux. Fortunately, most of these are small and pose no serious threat, but large damaging earthquakes can and will occur. Although many regions of Canada can be affected by earthquakes, the most potentially damaging ones would occur here in western British Columbia, as well as along the Ottawa to Quebec City corridor. The federal government takes the threat from earthquakes very, very seriously. As the authoritative source of information on earthquakes in Canada, my department, Natural Resources Canada, monitors seismic activity and provides timely and reliable information to the public, to the media, to infrastructure operates, operators and to emergency responders. This information we produce is used to regularly update the seismic provisions of the National Building Code of Canada ensuring engineers have the most up-to-date information when they are designing buildings and other infrastructure to withstand earthquakes. Today we are outlining measures we are taking to go further in helping Canadians to respond to earthquakes. The, government, the federal government has invested $36 million to develop a warning system covering those regions of Canada with strong potential for earthquakes and concentrations of population and critical infrastructure. These investments have taken place in the 2019 to 2024 period. And today I am pleased to announce the activation of a new early earthquake warning system here in British Columbia. Earthquake early warning will provide seconds to tens of seconds of warning to over 10 million people in Canada before the arrival of strong shaking. We cannot stress this enough during an earthquake every second counts. Aujourd'hui, j'ai le plaisir d'annoncer l'activation de ce système d'alerte au tremblement de terre en Colombie-Britannique. Le système d'alerte au tremblement de terre permettra à plus de 10 millions de personnes d'être averties quelques secondes ou dizaines de secondes avant l'arrivée d'une forte secousse. Lors d'un tremblement de terre, chaque seconde compte. 
When a strong earthquake is detected, alerts will be transmitted automatically to the public via the National Public Alerting System. When an alert is heard, recipients should assume that strong shaking is imminent and take immediate protective actions, usually involving the drop, cover, and hold on protocol. The alerts will initially be broadcast by the public on cell phones, radio, and cable or satellite television. In parallel to alerts to the public, critical infrastructure will soon be able to receive alerts which can be used to trigger safety systems to take automatic actions, such as sounding alarms, opening fire hall and ambulance bay doors, diverting incoming air traffic, triggering trains to slow down or stop to prevent derailment, and stopping traffic from driving onto bridges or into tunnels. Further, earthquakes do not recognize international boundaries, of course, and large earthquakes on either side of the Canada-US border can impact both countries. We have thus, in addition to developing our own enhanced warning system, been working closely with our American colleagues to share information between our respective warning systems, increasing warning times for both British Columbia and for Washington State. Earthquake early warning will help reduce injuries, deaths, and property losses by giving people valuable seconds to take protective actions. To protect everyone who resides in Canada's at-risk areas and to enhance mitigation, preparedness, and response to natural disasters like earthquakes, the Federal Government of Canada, provinces, territories, and Indigenous partners will keep communicating and will keep cooperating. Le système sera entendu plus tard dans l'année au sud du Québec et l'est de l'Ontario. The system will be expanded later this year to southern, uh, southern Quebec and to eastern Ontario. No matter what the natural disaster is, wildfires, floods, earthquakes, Canadians need their governments to be proactive in addressing the increasing likelihood of natural disasters. Our government is taking proactive action on that front. Today's announcement is an example of that work, but I would certainly also point to the work we are doing on flood mapping and on training new firefighters and ensuring those firefighters are equipped with the tools they need. I would say, unfortunately, some of the leaders, both federally and provincially of major political parties, continue to ignore the scientific realities of our time and the need for us to be prepared. Given what we face as a global community regarding increasing natural disasters, the lack of concern on the part of some leaders and the lack of regard for science is truly disappointing. In closing, I would like to thank the province of British Columbia and certainly to Minister Ma, who is my counterpart here on the North Shore, for its active collaboration in these efforts. It is by collaborating actively and sharing expertise and best practices that we can and we will make Canada a safer and more secure place to live. So thank you for joining us today. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Minister Wilkinson. And now, please allow me to invite the Honourable Harji Sajjan, President of the King Privy Council for Canada, and also the Minister of uh, Emergency Preparedness and Minister Responsible for the Pacific Economic Development Agency of Canada, to share his remark. Please. Thank you, Wilson. Um, it's great to be here with my colleague, uh, uh, with Wilson, with uh, Minister Wilkinson, and also with my very close colleague, Minister Ma, who we've been working close together for the last uh, two years, dealing with uh, a lot of the uh, uh, wildfires, uh, flooding, and other um, uh, emergencies. And I do want to acknowledge that we are gathered on the uh, Squamish, Musqueam, and Squalitooth uh, uh, First Nations. What I want to say here is that um, th this system is going to be a game changer. Uh, we in, uh, in the Lower Mainland, here, especially in British Columbia, we know uh, about the potential impact of, of, a big, of the big one, the earthquake. I remember when we were, or, uh, I was in elementary school um, at that time, there were discussions uh, about uh, the earthquake and a lot of work was taking place. I remember how in BC and uh, here in the Lower Mainland, we just took a leadership role and started uh, training, educating, putting the right systems in. I remember being part of that training because at the end of the day, we need to be uh, prepared. And I also remember at that time, initiative was taken very early on um, for the Lower Mainland to have its own heavy urban search and rescue team. It was only the first one of its kind. It's still activated today, Canada Task Force uh, One. Um, and they've been training and, and doing amazing uh, work. And sadly, at that time, I, when I was actually part of that team, the federal funding was cut 
from that team at the time when everybody Canadians were concerned about having a significant earthquake, the federal funding, or that Pierre Pauly was actually part of that government, they cut that funding at that time, just to save a few bucks. What we need to do is making sure that we invest in our systems and making sure that we are prepared, making sure that Canadians are prepared so that we can save lives. And that's what today's announcement does today. We see uh, day in, day out, our firefighters who are uh, um, uh, courageously going out fighting a fire here, whether it's in structural fires here in urban areas or the wildfires that are taking place all across our province and across uh, the country. We've seen the significant impacts of climate change and we need to make sure that we have the right investments in place. And this system that we're talking about wasn't, didn't just start. These discussions started a long time ago, that we need the right systems. It's not just about the response. We need to put the technology, the research in place. So there's a lot of work that has taken place. I want to acknowledge all the people who have been part of this and now the implementation. I can assure you, this system is going to save lives. It's going to be part of a much wider uh, system. And we're going to be doing more. One of my biggest concerns as Minister of Emergency Preparedness across this country is as we are dealing with, imagine wildfires across the country, that we have a significant earthquake that happens at the same time. We need to make sure that we have the right information, the right data, and the res right response capability. So that's what we as a government will continue to invest in. I'm happy to say that have a, we have a very good partner in uh, British Columbia, and especially with Minister Ma, working together to making sure that we have the right systems. And here in British Columbia, we can be a leader across the country on preparedness, prevention, and uh, response as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Minister Sajan. And at this moment, I'm pleased to welcome the Honorable Bowen Ma, Minister for British Columbia Emergency Prepare, uh, Emergency Management and Climate Readiness. Welcome, Minister Wong. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for, for joining us here uh, in our home community, of course, Minister Wilkinson and, and Minister Sajan as well here in North Vancouver. My name is Bowen Ma, Minister of Emergency Management and Climate Readiness for the province of British Columbia. This is a day that I have been looking forward to for a long time. Many British Columbians may not know this, but they have already been benefiting by from the protective uh, benefits of this system here in British Columbia for the last several months. Now, when an earthquake of uh, severe enough concern takes place, they will receive a broadcast intrusive alert sent directly to their cell phones uh, through uh, the radio broadcast and television broadcast to give them crucial seconds of warning, crucial seconds to tens of seconds of warning to make the decision to drop cover and hold, to make the decision not to get into that elevator to allow eventually critical infrastructure owners to ensure that fire halls have their bay doors open in time for the earthquake. This, these crucial seconds might not sound like a lot right now, but they will mean life and death for many people during an extreme earthquake. Here in British Columbia, we have been doing our part in preparing for the potential eventuality of a severe earthquake. Seismologists have been warning us for decades that the big one is to come and we all need to do our part. For the province, that means doing large-scale exercises like the one we held early in 2023, a large-scale exercise to validate our communication and response protocols across hundreds of organizations, hundreds of emergency partners in case of a catastrophic earthquake. It also means doing our part to make the investments that have to be made to upgrade transportation infrastructure, schools, hospitals, and all of our public infrastructure to modern day seismic standards. It also means that for those of you at home, British Columbians in seismically at risk areas to have an emergency plan in place for you and your family to have your emergency kits ready to go, to have a grab and go kit ready to go. What we have observed over the last many years is that emergencies are impacting British Columbians at a greater rate than ever before, largely driven by climate change. Now, earthquakes aren't exactly a climate change hazard, but in addition to all of the other climate-driven hazards, it means that British Columbians need to be more prepared than ever before. Last year, our government also adapted the Emergency and Disaster Management Act, the most modern, most comprehensive emergency act across the country that focuses not only on preparedness, but also all four phases of emergency management. 
that includes preparedness, but it also includes mitigation of the impacts of disasters before they happen. It includes response and, of course, helping communities to recover. We've got a lot more work ahead of us to ensure that every corner of British Columbia is prepared for and resilient against emergencies that can hit their communities. And we are so incredibly grateful to the government of Canada for investing in the earth earthquake early warning system. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Ma. Once again, uh, this concludes the announcement portion. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us here today, especially thank you to the North Vancouver Fire Hall for hosting us here, and uh, thank you for the remarkable uh, uh, work and bravery you delivered to our community. Uh, we'll now open for questions to the, uh, from the media, and uh, I would like to welcome Joanna, Director of Communication uh, of the Office of Minister Energy, and natural resources who will moderate the media availability. Hello, everyone. I'm Joanna, and uh, I'll be the moderator for today's press conference. Bonjour tout le monde. Je m'appelle Joanna, et je suis la moderatrice de la conférence de presse aujourd'hui. We're going to start with questions, uh, one question, one follow-up from folks that are present here today, uh, and then we will go to questions from the line. So any questions from the floor? Okay, <laughs> no questions from the floor. Uh, so I will turn it over to the questions on the line. Thank you, merci. We will now take questions from the telephone lines. So if you, uh, if you, have, a if you have a question, please press star one on the devices keypad. Nous allons maintenant prendre des questions du téléphone. Si vous avez une question, faites étoile 1 sur votre appareil. There will be a brief pause while the participants register. Il y aura une courte pause pendant que les participants passent étoile 1. The first question is from Nono Shen from the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Uh, oh, hi, I'm just curious uh, why did you decide to activate the warning earthquake system in BC first? And I wonder, like, which area in BC is most vulnerable to the earthquake? I think the question was why BC first. Why BC first? So uh, your question was not not totally clear, but I think it was uh, why why is this happening first in British Columbia? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so essentially what we have done um, is looked at areas that were at the greatest risk of large-scale earthquakes that also contain significant concentrations of population and or critical infrastructure. Uh, the two areas that are most, uh, most at risk are uh, here in, in western British Columbia and the, the corridor between Ottawa and Quebec City. And so we prioritized those areas for action in the short term. Uh, today, uh, we've announced that essentially the, the early warning system is up and running. It's been up and running now, as, uh, as Minister Ma said, for a couple of months. Um, and we will be looking forward to doing the same kind of thing in, uh, in uh, the Ottawa to Quebec City corridor later this year. Um, and then we will look to, uh, to see what we want to do to further expand the system. But this is the area of, of greatest risk. Michelle, do you have a follow-up? Um, I think I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, please press star 1 on the device's keypad. De nouveau, n'hésitez pas à faire étoile 1 sur votre appareil. There are no further questions registered at this time. Il n'y a plus de questions ce moment-ci. I will now turn the call back to the floor. De retour à la salle. Thank you. That concludes the conference today. Thank you. Great, great. Super. <laughs>